chef's knife is an all-purpose knife used for chopping, slicing, and mincing. Tapered blade is 8 to 14 inches long. It's the most frequently used knife in the professional kitchen. As with all knives, never use extreme force. The most dangerous thing in your toolbox is what? A dull knife. Also not paying attention is not a good idea. It causes some chefs to lose fingers. Always use smooth strokes. Guide the knife with one hand. Keep guiding hand fingers curled back. Your fingers curled underneath. When you're sharpening your knife, begin with a coarse whetstone. Remember to keep the knife at a 20 degree angle when using the whetstone. Use a steel to hone or straighten the blade immediately after and between sharpening. As with the whetstone, remember to keep the knife at a 20 degree angle. And remember to clean the knife after you um, hone it so that you don't get all those particles in the food. Using a double-sided footed stone, here is the proper way to sharpen your knife. First, take a good look at your blade. If it's very dull or damaged, you'll want to start with the more coarse side of the stone. If the knife is somewhat sharp and in good condition, only use the less coarse side. Most stones are known as wet stones. They require a light coating of oil or water, which helps cut the steel and keep it cool during sharpening. The blade should be held at a constant 20 degree angle. One way to determine the angle is to hold the knife at a 90 degree angle, then tilt it halfway to the stone. Tilt it halfway again and you'll be in the vicinity. Using light, even strokes, draw the knife toward you from heel to tip. Use the same number of strokes on each side of the blade and sharpen only in one direction. Be careful not to over sharpen or you'll shorten the useful life of your knife. Finish your knife with a dozen strokes on the sharpening steel. Using light, even strokes at a constant 20 degree angle, alternate both sides of the knife and steel. If you use your steel regularly, you'll rarely need to use a stone. A good way to test the sharpness of your blade is to use a piece of paper. Your freshly honed knife should easily cut ribbons. What is pasteurized milk? Pasteurization is the process of heating milk to a sufficiently high temperature for a significant length of time to destroy pathogenic bacteria. Typically it's 161 degrees for 15 seconds. All grade A milk must be pasteurized prior to retail sale. And we know that doesn't kill all the bacteria, which is why it still goes bad, so you still need to watch your refrigeration. Types of butter are salted butter, which contains up to 2.5% of salt added. European style butter, which contains more milk fat than regular butter, and it's usually 82 to 86 percent with very little or no added salt. Whipped butter incorporates air in the butter, increasing the volume and the spreadability. Clarified butter has water and milk solids removed by a process called clarification. which you would do as part of your mise en place. Compound butter, softened whole butter mixed with flavoring ingredients. Keep in mind that uh, most recipes calling for fresh shell eggs are based on large eggs, not medium or jumbo. They're based on large eggs.
food cooked in salted water cooks faster because the boiling point is one or two degrees higher than normal. Lack of salt can create a flat taste. Vegetables can be steamed in a convection steamer or by placing them in a basket or on a rack and suspending them over boiling liquid in a wok, saucepan, or hotel pan. Vegetables can also be pan steamed by cooking them in a covered pan with a small amount of liquid. Most of the cooking is done by steam because only a small portion of the food is submerged in the liquid. When cooking vegetables, flavor loss can be minimized by steaming whenever possible. Steaming produces vegetables with clean, natural flavors. Cooked vegetables that are firm to the bite are called what? Al dente. Preserving the nutritional qualities of vegetables can be obtained by cooking them as quickly as possible, cooking them in a small amount of liquid, and serving them with their cooking liquid. Tenderness in cooked meat is determined by the following factors, the cooking method used, the maturity of the animal, how old it is, and the specific cut used. Two ways of aging meat are wet aging and dry aging. Wet aging is the process of storing vacuum packaged meats under refrigeration for up to six weeks. That allows the natural enzymes and the microorganisms time to break down the connective tissue, which tenderizes and flavors the meat. And dry aging, which is the process of storing fresh meats in an environment of controlled temperature, humidity, and airflow for up to six weeks. Meat can lose up to uh, 5 to 20 percent of their weight through the moisture evaporation, therefore, dry aging would be more expensive. Green meat is meat that's not been uh, aged enough for rigor mortis to dissipate, or meats that have been frozen during the rigor mortis period, so those would tend to be tougher. Stews contain small pieces of meat and are either braised or simmered and served in a sauce or gravy made of its cooking liquid. Stews use a combination of dry and moist heat cooking methods. Stewing is a combination of dry and moist heat cooking methods. Stewing is most often associated with smaller pieces of food. Beef will be used in this procedure. Trim and cut the food to be used into small uniform sized pieces. Heat a small amount of fat in a heavy pan and sear the meat on all sides, developing color. Once all the meat is browned, add any ingredients required by the recipe to be sauteed, like onions, and garlic. Add flour and stir to make a roux.
brown the roux lightly. Gradually add the cooking liquid, stirring to prevent lumps. The liquid should completely cover the meat. Add additional ingredients and seasonings. Bring the stew to a simmer, cover and place in a 250 to 300 degree oven or continue to simmer on the stove top until the meat is tender. If necessary, degrease and adjust thickness. If not added during the cooking process, vegetables and other garnishes may be cooked separately and added to the finished stew. When I was a hospital food service director, certified Angus beef and Grolsch beer was the key to the doctors loving the food service department. It's, it's really great stuff. Certified Angus beef is beef that meets the standards for yield, marbling, and aging, and is graded high choice or prime. New York steak comes from the boneless strip loin. Properly roasted meat should be tender, juicy, and evenly cooked to the appropriate degree of doneness. Meat should have a pleasant appearance when whole as well as sliced and plated. To check for doneness, test the internal temperature with a meat thermometer. The highest quality and most expensive cuts come from what part of the pig? That would be the loin. Bacon comes from where? That would be the belly.